Hi, my name is Nikhil Satinathan, and I'm part of Team 3061 Husky Robotics. And today I will be talking about electrical terminology in FRC. So why is terminology important in electrical? So today we'll be discussing three different terms and they're very important to understand about specifics of components that we've discussed previously. Some components that are used in electrical have specifications that re rely upon the user having some electrical background knowledge. Understanding terminology is also very important in conversation with other electrical members to discuss problems with the electrical board. This becomes important not just during the build season, but during the heat of competition as well. Finally, understanding terminology can prevent major electrical issues in terms of shortage and incorrect usage of parts. So the first term we'll learn today is voltage. Now the most direct definition of voltage is the measure of electrical potential energy per unit of charge. Now I understand that might be confusing for you, some of you. In fact, it was very confusing for me well uh, at first, but I was given this, um, this great parallel, which is uh, think about a river. So in a river, you have water flowing through and voltage can com be compared to the pressure behind that water or pressure behind that, that um, the pushing of, of that electricity. And when we say electricity, we mean the electrons flowing throughout the circuit. Um, so that's what voltage can be best related to and that can help on, uh, bring a better understanding of what voltage is. So voltage has the symbol V and a unit of voltage is also called a volt. So it helps better understand a, a 12 volt battery or 12, we commonly see 12 V battery, but 12 volt battery, even in your house, you have double A AA and triple A batteries, which each have a certain amount of voltage as well. So many of the components we use on our robot require a certain amount of voltage in order to function. So it's really important to know how much voltage uh, a component requires, because if you give that component too little, voltage, it could result in poor performance. Uh, and if you give that component too much voltage, it could um, result in shortage, which is not great. So it's really important to know uh, how voltage works throughout the electrical system. The second part that's important to knowing is uh, current. So back to our, our river um, parallel, the current is the flow of energy, so it would be the flow or the speed of water throughout that river. So voltage is the pressure of that water pushing it down the river, and current is the actual speed of that water as it goes down the river. So it has the symbol I, which is not used in conversation, but very important for Ohm's law, which we'll learn in a little bit. And it has the unit of amp. So I'm sure you've heard that something has a certain amount of amps or it has a certain amount of amperage, so that's where that comes from. Um, and in fact, with amperage, uh, you can sometimes refer to the measure of an object's current as its amperage. So that's where you'll hear that term. Um, and back to our river um, parallel, um, it could also deal with wire sizes. So in our river, if we had a really narrow river, right, all the water would need to concentrate into that small space as it went down its path. And therefore, you would have a, a lower speed as everything needs to kind of pack into one place, right? If you had a wider river, then that water can flow much easily through its path, and therefore, it has a greater current. And this is the same thing for wires and um, electrical current. So if you have a thinner wire, you have a, a, a smaller current. And if you have a thicker wire, you'll have a bigger current. So this really helps us in understanding gauges and wiring. So um, in electrical, you'll often see that we're dealing with different gauges of wire. So um, a lot of our the connection to the VRM has a, I believe, a 22 or 24 gauge wire, but the big battery wire is an eight gauge wire. So it really fluctuates. And it's different than how you think. You'd think that the bigger the numbers get, the bigger the wire, um, but it's actually the bigger the numbers get, the smaller the wire, and the smaller the numbers get, the bigger the wire. So it's kind of the inverse of how you'd think it'd be. And Obviously, the bigger the wire, the more copper that's running through it, and therefore, it's kind of like the wider the river, the more electricity that can flow through that wire. So these past two terms of voltage and current really help us understand a component of the electro system that I broke down in my last video called the VRM, or the voltage regulator module. So a lot of some of the components on our robot need a consistent voltage 
and a consistent amperage in order to function. And the biggest example of this is the radio. With the radio, um, you're connecting to the joystick and the, the driver. Um, and it's important that you don't lose connection throughout the match. So let's just say the driver pushed the robot forward at full speed, all the motors would be, would be taking a lot of the voltage and, but you don't want the radio to drop in voltage because if you drop in voltage, as I was saying, too little voltage can result in poor performance. And that can be seen through, let's just say you, you lose connection. So you always want to have the VRM in order to keep that steady voltage, no matter what movements or what, uh, how much your voltage is fluctuating. The final term that we'll talk about today is probably what is least used during the robotic season, but it's really important to tie all the other two terms together. Um, and this is resistance. So resistance or to resist as a word is to push or hold back. And resistance is the same. In fact, it's the, the hindrance to the flow of charge. So it's actually holding back or pushing back that, that flow or the water in the river. So in the river parallel, it would be a log. So if you put a log in the river, the, the water wouldn't flow as easily and there would be kind of a blockage there. It would flow, it would get over the, the log and continue, but it would, once it continued, it'd be at a much slower speed because of that log. So resistance has the symbol of R and its metric unit is the ohm, which is um, represented by the Greek omega symbol. And it's important to electrical in general is the use of resistors. So resistors obviously come from the word resistance. Um, and a resistor provides a certain amount of resistance and it can reduce the amount of current or voltage in a wire. Um, and this is important to possibly fit the criteria of a component you're using. Um, and the way that all these three terms tie together, um, which helps better explain resistance in itself is something called Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is commonly um, known as V equals IR. So as we learned, V is voltage, I is current, and R is resistance. So this can be rewritten to say V equals, or voltage equals current times resistance. And this is a very simple, straightforward equation that really ties together all the three terms we learned today and really important in solving some electrical problems. So let's just say we had a component um, that we wanted to um, lower the current on it was getting too much current too much amperage so what we would do if we want the same amount of voltage going to that component is that we would increase resistance because if you look at the equation if you increase the resistance but you wanted the voltage to stay the same you would have to decrease the current um, so it it really nicely shows the factor of change that each of uh, the parts have to go through um, and it really ties together the, the three parts well it's not often used in FRC and in the work we do, but it's really important to know and um, it's really nice background information to have in case you need it um, during competition. So if you have any questions on these three terms or in other um, about previous videos or this video, um, feel free to send us an email at admin at team3061.org. And remember that there are other videos in the series, so uh, stay tuned. Um, I know there's a soldering video and a crimping video coming as well, so look out for that. Thank you.